What's up, divas? And what's up, divas? It's your girl April. So, of course, it is Wednesday. And yes, I sound like crap right about now. I don't even have any water in here. OMG. Okay, so I'm sounding like really, really bad right now. I'm getting better. I'm not really sure what happened. Um, I think it has a lot to do with just raising my voice. You know, you have those moments where you got to raise your voice at people, especially those that are 18 years old. You know what I'm saying? You get the point. But yeah, so my voice is like kind of cracking. It was really bad yesterday and I had the nerve to do a voiceover for my makeup video, but whatever. You know, we don't always have the best days, but it is what it is. Funny thing, funny fact, okay, funny fact. I actually had this shirt on like two real talks ago. Um, I don't really care uh, because it's hot outside and I wasn't even going to do anything today. Like I wasn't going to go anywhere. I wasn't going to do anything. I was just going to chill and relax. And then when I, I, I got dressed and then I realized it was Tuesday. And then I realized because it is really Tuesday, but by the time this video goes up, it'll be Wednesday. And then I realized when I was about to do the video, holy shit, I wore this like two real talks ago. Um, I wonder if somebody's going to notice. But anyway, y'all notice now, but I did wash it, so I don't really care. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? The whole entire look is different, like me and myself, but the shirt is the same. And I love this shirt. Like, I got it from Zawful, and I actually do really like it. So, yeah, that's the reason why I'm re-wearing it. Um, but other than that, there's really nothing new in my life. I do have a couple of wigs up for sale. And also, um, why do people feel the need to, like, mine? your business you know what I'm saying like mind your fucking business when I leave a comment on somebody's video on YouTube why do you females that are watching that are responding not those who are watching right now but you know who you are why do people feel the need to always be like a superhero okay meaning if I leave a comment about something and I'm relating to what the person is saying in a video why does somebody else feel the need to come at me? Like, first of all, nobody's fucking talking to you. Second of all, it's not your video. Third of all, you're not the fucking response team. And fourth of all, mind your motherfucking business. Don't come for me unless I sent for you. And I really hate that shit. Like, okay, so I was relating to a subject matter at hand. It was kind of the same, but it wasn't the same. And I let the person know, basically, like, yeah, same shit happened to me where someone was basically trying to get me for some hair. I got this email from this one person who said they was a loyal fan of mine. Twice. The second time I responded by clicking on their Google Plus name in my Google Gmail. And it brought me to their name, which I highlighted and, you know, Googled. And I found them on Twitter. To make a long story short, in my email that they sent to me twice, they said their father had passed away, their mother was poor, they were going through hard times, they didn't have money to eat, barely, etc., etc., to get school supplies, and all she wants to do is just do, she wants her hair to look nice. Any hair that I have laying around, etc., will be great. Now, I've done this before, meaning I have sent out hair to people three times and got burnt. You know what I'm saying? Just because of their email. So, I don't go for that. I don't, I don't do that no more. But anyway, so I Googled her name, and on Google+, Plus you can see the person's picture, and on Gmail, you can see the person's picture, who the email is attached to. So it shows me she has a Twitter account. I go on her Twitter because it's public. Are you serious? Y'all ain't destitute, bitch. You're doing better than me. Out shopping, always at Starbucks. You know, at this nice-ass hotel, getting mimosas and all kind of drinks. Shit that I don't even fucking do, okay? Because I can't afford to do that shit. I have bills to pay and I have kids to take care of. So that's the last thing on my fucking list. And it was just, like, ridiculous. So I was like, oh, why are this bitch trying to play me? So I, I, I sent her a message back. Basically, was like, you know what? Um, I, this, is, this is the second email you done sent me. And... The first time I didn't pay no attention, but now I know a scammer when I read, see, and hear one. And it's funny how you do on hard times, but you on Twitter. And I just basically broke it down to her. I said, would you like for me to put you on blast on social media and let everybody know who you are and what you do? Or you can just stop your bullshit right now. She was just basically responding back, don't put my stuff on um, on social media. I won't bother you or anyone else again. So that, that goes to tell me that you not only have done it to me, you have done it to several other people on YouTube or wherever. You're just trying to scheme and scam people. So I, I used that um, scenario 
with somebody else's video because they were trying they were getting catfished from companies or not even from companies companies were getting catfished by other people stating that that was them on youtube and can we can i do another hair review for you and all this shit like basically saying that hey I'm not really muffling as my lovers, but I'm going to pretend to be. And I'm going to email these companies so I can get some free hair. And, if free comp and the companies will email the real person back and be like, did you send us this email? No. So I said, you know, I used my situation scenario to their YouTube video because I'm like, yeah, I know how you feel basically. This is what I was going to do. This, some fucking chicken head, right? In the emails, oh, that's petty. Why would I do that to somebody? Put them on blast. I should just keep it moving and push on. Just let them know what they did was wrong. That's why I hate your fucking ass. I hate that fucking old lady. Blah, 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 blah. Like, first of all, you telling me that it's petty what I was going to do to that person. But do you find it petty to call me an old lady and on top of that say you hate me? I don't really give a fuck if nobody don't like me because in, at the end of the day, I don't give a fuck. I don't care if nobody don't like me because you ain't paying my bills. You ain't breathing for me. Y'all don't, you know what I'm saying? You don't love me. You don't, you ain't my family. I don't really give a fuck if certain people don't fucking like me. Like what I'm supposed to do, cry about the shit. No, I don't really give a fuck if you don't like me. But I think it's petty on your behalf to call me all kind of names like old lady. Bitch, I might be 42 years old. Um, however, I don't look like I'm 42 years old. And what do you dislike about me so much that you have to use the word hate? What, what is it? I mean, like, dumb shit like that. And who the, who the fuck asked you about your opinion about what the fuck I wrote? Like, I hate when bitches be like, oh, they like real stance. Like a real superhero stance. Fan, fan type of stance. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like females who love Beyonce. Like, one time I wrote something about Beyonce's, um album hitting like everybody's going crazy and I'm not really sure is it me because I'm not really going crazy over it like other people are. Do you know all these fucking Beyonce Beehive fans came at me like I had to come at one bitch like bitch go have a seat because you got a better chance of me responding to you than Beyonce will ever respond to you. She don't fucking know you. Y'all be acting like some of these females and people who love these other people be getting out of character. Like, okay, I understand you like this person that much, but who the fuck asked you for your opinion? Like, mind your, just mind your fucking business. Stop coming at me because you don't know me like that. Like, on some real shit, and you got a better chance of me responding than that person that you going hard, die hard for, who don't even give a fuck about you, who ain't even commenting back to your dumb ass. So go sit down. Like, I hate people. I just hate people. I don't even hate. I just, it just, I hate shit like that. Like, Stop responding and commenting back to what the fuck I wrote. That shit gets on my nerves, like on some serious shit. Shit that gets on my nerves. Or if I'm doing a video and you may not like what's in the video and you'll write some shit like, oh, I thought you was all about affordability. I'm sorry, but I didn't tell you to buy the shit. I didn't put a gun to your head and say go buy the shit. Okay? So cut the shit out. Cut the shit out. I hate shit like that. Like Sometimes there are days on YouTube that I don't come at people. Do you know what I'm saying? I just let the comments slide. But then there are the days like, okay, you done caught me on the wrong motherfucking day. And, bitch, I'm about to go off on your fucking ass. Don't write no dumb shit on my fucking comments. Like, on some serious shit. Don't write no dumb shit. Because I don't, I'm not one for the dumb shit. I hate dumb shit. On a serious level, I hate dumb shit. Okay? If you don't like me, don't fucking watch my videos. Okay? If you don't like me, don't comment. If you don't like what the fuck I posted, I mean, I really don't give a fuck if you comment or not, but just don't be stupid about it. You know what I'm saying? Just don't be fucking stupid about it. That's all I'm saying. You know? But on that note, other than that, that's about it. Um, yeah. If you want a real talk about your life situation or somebody you know, you can always send me an email to MuffinIsMyLovers2012 at gmail.com. Please make sure to put in the subject line, Real Talk. And yes, if you want to change the names of your characters in the email, you can do so by letting me know in the video. Other than that, let's get into this video. Okay? Yes. Let's get into this video. Okay, guys. So yes, this one, the first one is kind of long. So let's get and just let's just just do this. Hey, April, you can make up the names for the story. See, I'm 25 years old and married. I have been with my husband since I was 16, but actually married since I was 20. We now have three. 
we now have a three-year-old together as well. Long story short, short, given the fact that I have been with him since I was 16, you already know the bullshit I've been through. I have put my own morals and values to the side to try new things with this boy because he has yet to portray a man. I don't like to play victim, but it is what it is. I have been physically and verbally abused by him, but as of lately, he is just verbally abusive. I have stuck by his side through everything and always keep faith that things would get better. That was the young, dumb, and naive me. Fast forward to last year. He got himself into some trouble. Some trouble. He received oral from a young lady whom he later found out was underage by a few months. This took place in my home. He was pressed with charges and everything. I was the very last person to find out. He brought this side bitch to my brother-in-law girls. My brother-in-laws. He brought this side bitch to my brother-in-law girl's job. He works at a lawyer's office later as I found out. But I was the one that paid for this lawyer. Went to his hearings and paid all of his court fees. April, you can imagine how pissed I was. Words just could not express. I thought about leaving him right then and there, but I held it down. So now I am the only one working because he can't due to being suspended from work. So now not only am I the only one working, but had to take my son out of daycare temporarily and cut back on our expenses. I later find out that this dude was bringing over the next bitch to my apartment while he's supposed to be watching my son. Apparently this chick was here every day. I ran into this chick one day, um, one day, one, I ran into this chick one day, one mile through the door. I don't know what that is. Instead of walking through my door, I think that's what she said. Instead of me, instead of me spazzing the fuck out like I almost did, I decided to be smart about it and talk to this girl. Find out what, what she knows and what's going on. Come to find out, he told her a bunch of bullshit. But I made it very clear. First thing out of my mouth is, you know we're married, right? Bitch had no clue. Long story short, he told her some bullshit. He's a master manipulator and liar. But I know for a fact that she had to know some shit was not right. Anyway, I was about to leave his ass again. Given all the bullshit that has happened with his court case, he was stressed, nervous, and scared, obviously. So much that he wanted to commit suicide. So I stayed. I happened to call him one night and he said to me he was about to jump in front of a moving car. I contacted some of his close family members. Fast forward some more. Here we are now after all that we have been through. And although he has not been physically abusive, his mouth and the things that come out of it is so disgusting. This relationship is so toxic and I want out. He is still not working. I am the only one carrying all the weight. All of this is his fault, but I feel like I've allowed this to happen by staying and tolerating it. I am at the point now where I am numb to the bullshit. I am disgusted most days. I am too broke to move out and separate. My mom, my mom has no space and plus we are both one in the same. I can't deal. I know I want to leave. I just don't know how or where to start. This has been long enough, but girl, I could write a book, but I'll just stop here. Damn. First of all, let me get a bottle of water, okay? And an aspirin, because my teeth are killing me. Okay, so the bottle of water I had was half. Stop the bidet. <laughs> my kid. Okay, so that was my daughter. So, yes, I'll leave. My teeth have been hurting. Um... I'm going to have to find a dentist, like a pro bono or like a dental school because the dentist is so expensive. Uh, my tooth broke off. Like, oh, God, it hurts so bad. You just don't understand. Um, So, oh, God, it hurts like so bad. So, anyway, let's get back to this. We are going to call her Natalie. So, basically, Natalie is 25 years old. She's been with her, her husband since she was 16. They've been married for five years. They got a three-year-old daughter. This nigga then... Um, been dragged through the mud by his own account because he didn't have some young bitch up in her house, their home, sucking his dick. Okay, so I'm not really sure how that came about, like, but whoever pressed charges against Natalie's husband, um, the girl was underage who was sucking his dick in his house, and he didn't lost his job. He's got suspended. 
And on top of that, he's fucking with some other young, some other bitch, and he's bringing her to the house. So now he has, he got some side shit that he's bringing over to Natalie and his place of living while Natalie is at work because he's watching the kid. And the shit that come out of his mouth is just basically real disrespectful. And she's only probably staying with him basically because he's threatening to commit suicide. He's stressed out. Let me tell you something. She is numb to the relationship. She don't want to be bothered no more. She's broke. She can't move out. Let me tell you something, Natalie. First of all, I would have left him a long time ago when I found out he has some underage bitch sucking his dick. In the place where we live. I wouldn't have gave a fuck about him having to go to court, going to jail, losing his job. I wouldn't have cared about none of that. Because he didn't really care about you and your three-year-old. Okay? He didn't care about you and your family. He didn't care about his family. He didn't care about his home. If he had cared about you guys enough, enough. It, it may not have been 100%, but just enough. Then he would have took that shit outside of the home. He wouldn't have had that young bitch sucking his dick where y'all live. That's number one, a violation right there. Like, he totally violated by having the next bitch up in your house sucking him off, like, on some real shit. Who the fuck does that? Like, why would you even do some shit like that? But on top of that, now you got some other side chick, some side bitch, and you got her coming over the house while you watching your son. And ain't even watching while your son is home with you and you don't have no job because you got suspended from work because you got charges pending because you let some young bitch in your house suck your dick, okay? And you're doing all of this while your wife is at work, okay? What kind of man does some shit like that? I'm sorry, but if you cheat on me, that's one thing. But if you cheating on me where we live at inside our home, you got the balls, the balls to bring some side bitch to the place where we live at. Nigga, you got to be cut the fuck off. I'm sorry, but Natalie, you should have been done, been done with him when you found out that he had charges pending on him for fucking with some underage bitch. Even if he fucked with the underage bitch and that he didn't have, and he wasn't fucking with her in your household, you should have been done with him. Okay, me, I would have been done with him, but I would have really been done with him if you cheated on me and you cheated on me. In our home. That right there is like, okay, you know what? I'm done. I'm done. Put a fork in it, nigga, because you done and I'm the fuck done too. Okay? Bottom line. I am not about to let no man disrespect me to the fullest. That right there is the fullest. Obviously, he don't give a fuck about you and your home and y'all kid. Because if he did, he wouldn't be having these little side bitches coming to your house where you live. It's one thing to cheat on somebody. But it's a total different ball game when you bring that side chick to the fucking home. I told y'all the last time about side chicks. You know what I'm saying? The meaning of them. It's like a side of fries. You go to the restaurant. You go into the restaurant for that lobster, that steak, the main course meal. We ain't thinking about them side dishes like them fries or coleslaw or salad. We came for the real deal, the big meal. You know what I'm saying? But you always get a side. You always get a side with something. But I really came there for the fucking lobster. I didn't come there for the sides. Sides is just the sides. That's why they call sides, because they're not the main course. But when you bring them sides home, nigga, you screwed. That's just like, okay, you went out to dinner. My kids went out to dinner, and they had the main course meal. And they didn't eat the sides, but they bring the sides home. They're like, here, mom, you can have the sides. I don't want the fucking cold-ass french fries. What the fuck? You know what I'm saying? He ain't bring me the steak or the lobster. He ain't bring me the main course, but you're going to bring me some sides. Man, I don't want that shit. You don't bring the sides home. You bring the main shit home. So he played himself when he brought them side bitches to your house. And Natalie, you played yourself when you held him down. I know a lot of people be like, oh, it's death to us part with marriage. But here's the thing. It's also respect. It's respect, too. You ain't respecting me. It's not about to be to death to us part. Nigga, you might be the one to be to death. Because I might kill you. You may be dying at the hands of me. Okay? Your death might be because of my hands around your motherfucking throat. Or whatever else other way I might fucking kill your ass. So, a lot of people be like, oh, it's death to us part. Yeah, it's, it's a great thing if it's death to us part. 
if you respect it in the relationship. But if you was disrespecting me, you ain't got no respect for me and our home and our child, then ain't no death to us part. Nigga, it's over. It's over. And it's fucked up in this world. Just because you with somebody since you were 16, and a lot of people try to, they'll be just be like, I'm holding it down, I'm going to hold it down. Okay, but is this nigga holding it down for you? Obviously not. He ain't holding it down for you. He don't give a fuck about you. And he damn sure don't give a fuck about y'all kids. If he got the side bitch coming to your house, plus he got the side bitch coming to your house while your child is there. A three-year-old, some are, some three-year-olds can articulate real well. But then some of them are just like, okay, I'll just tell this three-year-old, this is Auntie Nene or whoever. And they'll believe that because they're only three years old. So you're not only lying, but you're manipulating our child, which shows the hugest lack of respect. You have none. Okay? So, there are always ways to get out of a relationship, a, le a relationship that you're stuck in. You don't have to go through lawyers and courts to file for a divorce. You can do this yourself. There's always ways to get out of a situation that you don't want to be in. You say that your mother doesn't have the space for you to stay with her. Okay, that's fine. But do you realize that you are in a situation that is abusive? It does not always have to be physical abuse. It can be verbal abuse. And there are many different agencies that can help you get on your feet and find home or housing for you and your child to where you don't have to feel like you're stuck. You know what I'm saying? His mouth is verbally abusive. That's a form of child neglect because your child has to see that. You know what I mean? That is a form of child neglect, whether you know it or not. The child is sitting in the home and... They have to deal with the verbal abuse. I'm sorry, but I ain't about to let anybody verbally abuse me, okay? Because verbal abuse can surely land to physical abuse. Yo ass get tired of the nigga running off at the mouth. You gonna get real fucking tired. And what you gonna do? You gonna go upside his head. I mean, me personally, that's what I would do. I'm not going to allow you to keep talking shit and talking shit and talking shit to me. After a while, I'm going to be like, you know what? I'm going to knock you the fuck out. Bottom line, I'm going to knock you the fuck out. I'm not going to allow you to keep talking shit to me. Okay? Just not. Just not. And... There are a whole lot of agencies out there that can help you with your situation. You just need to sit down and take the time out and look them up. Look at for your department of local so, so, your department of social services. You may not be eligible for things, but I'm pretty sure if you explain to them the situation, they will be more than happy to direct you in the right place to go. Children and Family Services. They'll be happy to direct you. These might not be the places that you need to be at, but these places can help you find the agency that can help you. You know what I'm saying? Each agency has a foot in the door for something else. And I'll be damned if I'm about to sit in a house with some nigga who done had multiple bitches in and out of my motherfucking place of dwelling. My home. Your home is your, your your sanctuary. It is where you go to relax. It is where you go to feel safe. It is where you go to have a family. This nigga's got all kind of side bitches and shit coming in your home. That's like inviting cockroaches in your house. Rats in your house. You know what I'm saying? He ain't got no respect for you. He ain't got no respect for your kid. So what would I do? I would reach out to my community. and Because... If it were me and I didn't have no ins and outs and no means, no financial stability and no financial means to get myself out of the situation, I would reach out into my community and I would start asking. Some people have a lot of pride and they don't want to let others in their business because they feel prideful or, you know what I'm saying? But sometimes you got to put your pride aside for your own sanity, you know what I'm saying? And for your own pride. You... Don't allow somebody else to knock your pride down. So basically what I'm saying to you is you got to knock your shell, your shell, your wall of pride of asking for help and ask for that help because this nigga is fucking up your pride. You know what I'm saying? 
I ain't about to let nobody fuck up my pride. And I ain't about to let nobody fuck up who I am mentally and physically. All right? You know what I'm saying? I ain't about to let nobody out there start talking about me like, ooh, did you see Natalie's husband? He be letting all them bitches up in her house while she at work. Nigga, if you want to go jump in front of a moving car, then bye, Felicia, bye. Okay? I know that might sound cruel to some people, but I'm sorry. If that was my husband and he did some shit like this to me and then he told me I'm about to kill myself and go and jump in front of a moving car, bye, Felicia. Bye. Niggas say shit like that because it's attention. Nine times out of ten, if somebody tell you they about to kill themselves, they're really not going to kill themselves. I mean, I'm not saying take it lightly, but in a lot of um, situations, if a person really wanted to kill themselves, they're not going to give you clues and they're not going to tell you, I'm about to kill myself. They're going to kill themselves. They're not going to tell anybody because they don't want anyone to stop them. They really don't want to be here. So this nigga is telling you I'm going to jump in front of moving traffic. I mean, yeah, give him some type of attention, but I'm just telling you from experience, this is a nigga seeking attention. I've had the same situation happen with my ex-husband. He would tell me shit like this too. Nigga, you ain't kill yourself yet, but you're going to kill yourself because you keep drinking, okay? But you just don't realize that. But you you telling me you're going to jump in front of a moving car. Well, bye, because it's really not going to kill you like that, all right? I mean, it may, but it may not. Your ass probably be fucked up in the hospital, and then who's supposed to take care of you? Not my black ass. Okay, so he just seeking your attention and your pity. But if the nigga is mouthing off to you and he's disrespecting you and he's got bitches coming up in your shit and he's running off at the fucking pussy, meaning the mouth and all types of shit. Girl, tell that nigga bye. Nigga, bye. Okay, let him. His shit will be out the fucking door at the end of this video. On some real shit. I am not about to leave my home. And then again, I wouldn't even want to fucking be there. Honestly, I wouldn't even want to be in that place of, of dwelling with him. Because you done got the side bitches coming up in there sucking you off. You got the side bitches coming up there in front of our three-year-old. Like, I don't even want to live here no more. I'm about to take my kid. Me and my kid, we're going to take ourselves. And if I don't have nowhere to go, um, bitch, I'm taking myself to the women's shelter. And I'm going to have them help me get myself back on my feet and get my shit and my life back together and get the fuck away from you. Honestly, if that were me in this situation... This is what the fuck I would do. And that's right, females. I said it. I would take my ass to the woman's shelter with my kid to get out of the situation. I am not about to sit up there and let you fucking embarrass me in front of the whole goddamn world to see and my family and friends to see how you fucking bitches while I'm at work taking care of us. You know what I'm saying? Fuck you, nigga. I'm going to leave. And guess what? Who gonna pay the rent on that apartment that you staying in? Because I'm at the shelter now. I'm not about to stay there. I'm sorry. We A lot of people, they were so worried about their pride and how everybody look at you. Let me tell you something. I'm not, allow, I'm not about to allow anybody to look at me as a stupid fucking ass neither. I'm not about to be allowed to be looked at as stupid. Okay? There's one thing as being smart and there's one thing as being stupid. And right now, Natalie, you are a whole world of stupid. Okay? When that nigga got his dick sucked and he had charges pressed against him, my ass would have been ghost. Okay? Because, hold up. Did you have some underage bitch suck your dick? But you had this underage bitch suck your dick in our house? Our apartment? Oh, niggas, you crazy? You must be out your rabbit ass mind. Okay, you know what? I'm about to leave. I'm going to pack my shit the fuck up. You don't have to get out because I don't even want to be living up in this motherfucker no more. But I'm going to pack my shit and my kid's shit and I'm going to be out. Okay, because if I don't leave right now, I'm about to fuck you up and I might fuck you up so bad that I'm being handcuffed. So the best thing for me and you is for me to fucking leave. So I'm going to basically say bye Felicia to my own self and me and my kid is going to get the fuck up out of here before I commit a homicide up in this motherfucker. Because did you not get your dick sucked? One, and you got your dick sucked by underage. Two, and you got your dick sucked by underage in our house. Three, and you cheated. Four, that's four violations right there. Okay, I mean, just think about it like that. You cheated, you got your dick sucked by underage in our house. That's four motherfucking things, okay? It's three strikes you out, but nigga, now it's four. Nigga, you... You, you out. I'm done. I'm just saying. So, on that note, Natalie, what the fuck would I do? I would get help. I would look into my community for help. Because we all have fucked up situations in life. Trust me, I've been there enough times. I've had many fucked up situations in life, okay? 
Trust me, I wasn't born with a silver spoon in my mouth. I go through a lot of dumb shit. I have five kids. Let's, re let's remember that I have five kids and two grandsons. So I've been through all types of shit in my lifetime, okay? But I've learned ways to get out of the situations, whether it be to ask people for help or whatever. You know what I'm saying? Everybody got pride, but sometimes you have to ask for help. But I'm not about to live with somebody who's making my life a miserable fucking hell. Now you numb to the situation. And I've been there too with my ex-husband. And as much as I loved my ex-husband, and I still do love him, regardless, I got numb to the situation with his drinking and then I couldn't tolerate it. And once you're numb to situations and certain shit, your surroundings, there's no love anymore. There's nothing left. And you don't never want to feel that way about a person. But over time, they put you in that situation. And if this nigga want to continuously be disrespectful by fucking with bitches, you know what? He ain't never going to be respectful. He just a disrespectful ass motherfucker. And he needs to be left the fuck alone. And let him dwell and stew in his own fucking juices. And let him go through his own shit alone. And if he gets depressed and stressed the fuck out, that ain't nobody's fault but his own. And why should you drag yourself through the mud? Because of him? Fuck that nigga. On some real shit. Because he told you, basically, and not those words, but he said, fuck you. Fuck your kid. I'm fucking this bitch in our house. And I don't give a fuck who knows about it. And that's that. He brought the side bitch around your kid. If you was to do that to him, he probably want to chop your motherfucking head off. So, please. That nigga be ghost. I would be ghost. I would take my kid and I'd be out. And don't pay for nothing the fuck else. On some real shit. Let him figure it out. Let them side bitches pay for that rent. Fuck him. What do you ladies think that Natalie should do? Because me personally... I wouldn't do a goddamn thing for that nigga no more. On some real shit. Nothing. Okay, guys. So, on to the next one. Hey, my name is Tiffany, and I need some advice on my current situation. I'm 28, and I have been dating this guy who is 24 for eight months now. This is my first real relationship, and he is such a good guy who really loves me and accepts me for who I am. He has most of the qualities I'm looking for in a man, but he is a little younger than me, and that has been a little issue. Our relationship has been a little bumpy, mostly because of me, and it's been an emotional ride. I have a lot of insecurities, especially about my body. I'm always confused and doubting our relationship, and he always tries to fight for our relationship, even when I don't. I feel like I'm always looking for an excuse to end the relationship, even though he did nothing wrong. I still have issues I need to work out about myself and need to learn to love and accept myself first. We decided that it would be best if we just became friends and end the relationship because it's not fair to him to be putting my issues and insecurities on him. So my question is, did I make the right decision to end things and work on myself before I enter into another relationship and make the same mistakes? Thanks, and I will appreciate your feedback. So we're going to call her... Um, Tiffany. She said her name is Tiffany for the video. Okay, Tiffany. So basically, Tiffany is 28 years old. She was dating this guy for eight months who is 24. Four years difference. And he had the best qualities. He had the right qualities of being a man. Um, but she just kind of felt really insecure about herself, her body, and just herself in general. And a lot of the things was issues that they had in a relationship going on were basically because of herself and her own insecurities. And he would always fight for the relationship and she basically... Didn't see any reason not why they should they should end it. Like, you know, she basically was all for ending it. She wasn't fighting for it. So they decided to become friends and just be, be friends because it wasn't fair to him. And she worked on herself. So honestly, Tiffany, I think that it's real important to love yourself prior to allowing anybody to love you or for you to love anyone else. How can you love anyone if you don't love yourself? You know what I'm saying? Just like take me for instance. I got out of a relationship, a 17-year relationship, which was my marriage. I wasn't married for 17 years, but I was married for, um, damn, 12 of the years. I was married for 12 of the years in my marriage, okay? And um, I love my husband, just like I said. I, I love him and I still love him, but... He didn't love himself enough because he was constantly drinking and going back and forth to jail. And so that became like a huge problem in our relationship. And you cannot build a relationship with anyone unless you care and love yourself. And when I got out of that relationship, I gave myself some time. I moved away, you know, and I was single for quite some time. And I met, I didn't meet the person. I got back with one of my kids' fathers. And 
Unfortunately, that didn't work out because this nigga is a scammer, a swindler, or whatever else you want to call it. So, I left him alone, and then I started dating again right after that. And then I realized, you know, I, I did a couple online dates, um, and I realized, you know what? These motherfuckers is trifling. They all trifling. And it's best that I just love myself and leave everybody the fuck alone not everybody but you understand what i'm saying leave the relationship world alone and focus on april focus on my family and learn some things about myself and build on myself and if you want to talk about insecurities with your body i have a lot of insecurities with my own body you know what i'm saying i do a lot of videos um and a lot of times i do some fashion lookbook videos and people always say in the videos oh you're not plus size you're not plus size okay you guys may not think that I'm not plus size but I really am you know what I'm saying when I take my clothes off I look in the mirror I see my belly hanging you know what I mean what a good um a body shaper won't do for you so that's what I wear in my videos so you know looks can be deceiving sometimes but I am insecure about my own body as well you know what I'm saying I'm not only insecure about my body but I'm insecure about my teeth because my teeth are not perfect like people in the world portray teeth are supposed to look and ask Having nice teeth is a, is a great thing. You know what I'm saying? So I'm very insecure about that because I've had my teeth um, pulled, my wisdom teeth pulled, which in return messed up my front teeth by spreading the top and the bottom. So I'm very insecure about that. I'm insecure about my weight. I'm insecure about the veins in my legs. I have horrible circulation in my leg, which makes the veins in my leg protrude to the surface of my skin. And I'm very insecure about that. And so until I can get over my insecurities, I don't think that I will be totally happy with myself. And when I'm in a relationship with anybody and they are genuine to me, like the person that I can honestly say that was genuine to me and didn't care about my body was my husband. You know what I'm saying? Even though he was he would drink and he would go to jail, I know that he truly, genuinely loved me. You know what I'm saying? He did. And, and until I'm happy with myself, I really can't deal with anybody because someone could tell me, yeah, I love you for who you are and this is what you are. And I, I wouldn't believe them because I don't believe in, in me sometimes. I don't believe in myself. I'm, I have a scar right here on my chest. And I know that people have seen this many times. And I'm insecure about that. Like, nobody is perfect, but we all have our flaws. And we all be insecure about a lot of shit in life. You know what I'm saying? A lot of things. And it takes a lot out of me sometimes to just be okay with how I look. You know what I'm saying? And then I have my days where I just don't care. And I just be like, you know what? I don't really care. I'm just going to go outside looking like this. I don't care. Meaning no makeup, no hair, just a scarf. Because why do I always have to be or try to be perfect? You know what I mean? This is who I am. Either you take me for who I am. You either like me or you love me. You know what I'm saying? Or you don't like me. And so sometimes I feel like this. I'd rather just be alone than have to deal with trying to figure somebody out in a relationship, you know what I'm saying? Trying to figure out, are they genuine? Trying to figure out, do they really love me for who I am or not, you know what I'm saying? And, and then it's like, you know what, I'll get in a relationship when the time is right for me. Maybe when I work out and I lose all this weight. Maybe when I get my teeth fixed and I look perfect. I can't say anything about my legs, but maybe just those two insecurities, my weight, and my teeth will make me feel a little bit better as a person. But you have to love yourself before you can get into a relationship with anyone. Everybody has a flaw. Nobody's perfect. And I'm pretty sure that some people's insecurities may seem real minute to us. But it's their insecurity. And it's how they feel about themselves. And I don't feel like I'm, I'm going to be ready to be in a relationship with anybody until I could feel that I'm able to love myself 100%. Like, I love myself, but I don't feel like I do 100% if I feel, like, insecure about certain things. You know what I'm saying? Like, my size, or my teeth, or my chest, or my legs. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, sometimes I kick myself down, like, damn, why I just can't be like the rest of these girls out here that got the perfect teeth, or the perfect legs, or the perfect body. Why I can't be like that? Why I gotta be like this? You know what I'm saying? Because back in the day, I was like them. And I'm not anymore. Like, what the fuck happened to you, April? You're like falling apart. There are days when, you know what I'm saying? Like, I can go a week or two 
and I'll be in severe pain because my knee, my right knee is killing me. You know what I'm saying? And I can't sleep and I can't sit. And it's like, okay, I'm falling apart. You know what I mean? And everybody else is like, oh my God, you're so beautiful. And you guys really don't know how it is for me sometimes and how my life is. So I just, honestly, I really don't feel like you did the wrong thing, Tiffany, by learning to love yourself because that's important. You know what I'm saying? That is the most important thing that you could do for yourself. I don't really feel like that's a bad thing. I feel like it's an important thing. And I feel like you did the right thing. You have to learn to love yourself first before you can allow anybody else into your world. And and you can love anybody else. You can't really love anybody until you can love yourself. And you may still have your insecurities and you may still have your flaws. But until you can love yourself and get to know you, you need to take time for you and just leave the relationship world alone. Of course, nobody wants to grow old alone and people want to be in a relationship. But sometimes we got to work on us and reach our goals in life before we can give anybody else a chance because sometimes those people that we give a chance just stop us from doing what we need to do for ourselves you know what I'm saying so continue to learn yourself continue to love yourself and never doubt yourself you know what I'm saying meaning did you do the right thing because in my eyes I feel like you did the right thing you know what I mean you don't let anybody else suffer because how you feel about you and then he may have truly genuinely cared about you but you yourself felt insecure about yourself. So when you feel insecure about yourself, it's kind of hard to feed off of anybody else and allow them to say, yeah, I love this about you. And that's the one thing you hate about yourself. It's kind of hard to just like, you know what I'm saying? Deal with that. So yes, just learn to love yourself. But just realize this. When you learn to love yourself, just realize number one key factor, ain't nobody perfect. And I say that to myself all the time. There's some days when I don't smile, you know what I mean, with my teeth showing because I'm like, I don't want to show my teeth. And you'll see, like, I have a lot of pictures. So mostly all my pictures, you don't see my teeth smiling because I'm insecure. And I'm like, I'm never going to smile until I, with my teeth showing, until I get my teeth fixed. And then it's like, you know what, April, you are who you are. And if nobody don't like you for your teeth, then you know what? It is what it is. Fuck them. They really ain't a real genuine person. And they only like you for your appearance and not for who you are. You know what I'm saying? So let Tiffany know how you would feel, how you would deal with that. Okay, so this one is going to be real quick to the end because I got to go get my baby from school. You can call me Cookie. Well, let me start by saying I love your tutorials and you're keeping it realness. I've been with my girlfriend for seven years now. And this one year we separated due to my cheating on her. We talked, sorted some things out and had eventually got back together. With her forgiving me and me doing what I needed to do to earn her trust back. But now it's two and a half years later and we don't have sex. Like I'm not getting any younger. I always ask why don't we have sex. And she says it's because I cheat on her. I'm in love with her and I don't want to cheat on her again. But what do I do to get my needs met? Okay, so basically that was it. Cookie was straight to the point. They've been with each other for seven years. Her and her girlfriend have not had sex. And she's like, why don't we have sex? And her girlfriend is basically like, because you cheated on me. So Cookie wants to know what she has to do to get her needs met. Now, I'm not really sure because it sounds like a lesbian relationship. So I'm not really sure, Cookie, if you use toys. But if you need to get your needs met, you need to basically meet them with either self-pleasuring yourself or you need to really have a sit down with your girlfriend and let her know it's two and a half years later I'm with you and you need to really tell her how you feel instead of you sitting here telling it to me you need to sit and look her eye in the eye and break it down to her about how wrong you was and how you fucked up and how you truly genuinely feel about this girl and let her know listen I'm feeling you and I love you and I fucked up, but I ain't trying to cheat on you no more. And I'm missing what we had. I'm missing our connection. I'm missing our bond. You know what I'm saying? I'm not saying leave her, but because some things you just can't give up on because if you truly love her, then you need to let her know. Okay, as I was saying before my memory card stopped, you need to sit her down, Cookie, and look her face to face, eye to eye, and tell her your true, genuine feelings. Look, yo, how you feel? Nobody is perfect. No relationship is perfect. And we all fuck up. We all mess up a lot in times in relationships. But if you really care for the person, don't give up. Don't say, I'm just going to end it because I haven't gotten my needs met. Until you can get those needs met 
by this person that you genuinely love. You got these, okay? And I know it may not be what you want, but let her know, listen, I miss your touch. I miss our connection. I miss how we loved on each other. You know what I mean? Explain yourself. Sometimes a sorry can be a sorry and we can break it down to a person about how we truly feel and so forth and so forth. And we can tell them, yo, I fucked up. I'm, I'm genuinely sorry. I didn't have any intentions on hurting you. But sometimes we just, you know what I'm saying? But sometimes even if you said it at that given moment, it may mean something and it may not mean something. But later on in a relationship, sometimes that same person that you've hurt, may need more reassurance. You know what I'm saying? And like with my past relationship, meaning my marriage, my husband, he had did some fucked up things and one of them was cheating. And even though 10 years had went by, I never forget the couple of times that he sat there and he just came out of nowhere and said to me like, our connection is not the same. And he had to basically say why he felt that way because of the shit that he did to me. And he broke it down and sat there and just apologized and explained himself. And that was like 10 years ago. But sometimes that still marinates in us and it still hurts. And that person just needs that reassurance. And they just need to be told again, yo, listen, I love the fuck out of you. And I, I'm genuinely sorry. Because even though you apologized to her two years ago, it's still marinates in her mind and it's still part of her and it, she's already went through that with you so maybe you need to sit there and you need to have a real conversation with this lady and let her know how you really feel about her and maybe you've done that already but some people it take more than just once and I'm not saying give up because I truly can tell by your email even though it was this short that you really care for her you know what I'm saying you've already admitted you're wrong but I can truly genuinely tell that you still care for her you just need to take some baby steps and reassure her. Sometimes people, they dwell on the past and it, things might be going good for the few moments or the, when I say few moments, like the, the months or the years and then later on it's like, ah, oh, damn, she fucked up and she on me a year ago. And it fucks with her again. I'm that type of person where I need some reassurance sometimes. Even though you did some foul shit to me five years ago, if I start thinking about that shit or we get into an argument, I will throw that shit up in your face, like with the quickness, okay, and let you know how I felt. You're like, damn, bitch, that was like six years ago. We was all good. I know, but I'm just saying, because it still hurts. You know what I'm saying? It still do hurt the person. So, some people like me, we do need more reassurance because we need to feel like, yo, do you really truly love me or do you just apologize for the time being? You know what I mean? And even though it's like, yo, that was six years ago. You really want me to apologize for that shit again? It make us feel better. It makes us feel better. Because then it's like, okay, yo, do they really love me? It's like we questioning ourselves. You know what I'm saying? So my advice to you would be sit her down. Let her know, yo, I miss the connection that we have. I mean, sex ain't everything, but it's how we bond sometimes. And, and I miss what we have. I miss our relationship. I miss our friendship. Because if you're not having sex and she's saying that you cheat on me, there's a friendship that's missing too. There's a whole entire relationship, a bond that's missing with it. And you need to gain that back. So you need to first start with sitting her down unexpectedly. Meaning she ain't even know this was coming. Kick it to her. And let her know. You know what I'm saying? That's what you need to do. That's the first step. And I guarantee you in time, your relationship will grow and it'll get a little bit better. And then your needs will be met. You know what I'm saying, Cookie? All right. So on that note, let all these ladies know what you would do in their scenario. And I got to go. I got to go get my mumsy from school. So leave all your comments below. Make sure you rate, comment, subscribe, share this video with friends, family, and even people you do not like, like I say all the time. And I will see you girls and guys on my next video. So stay diva and divolicious. And I love you guys. I love you, love you, love you. Bye.